Yoel Romero is keeping active by engaging in a grappling match. The Olympic silver medalist wrestler will square off against Commonwealth Judo champion Owen Livesey in an openweight submission grappling bout at Polaris 28, airing on UFC Fight Pass. Set for June 15 in Doncaster, England, this matchup was confirmed by promotion officials on Thursday. Romero, known for his achievements in wrestling, previously participated in a submission grappling contest against Chris Barnett under the banner of Dean Tool Promotions in 2019. He secured victory over the UFC heavyweight via a round one Kimura submission. Livesey, on the other hand, showcased his grappling prowess by taking on former UFC middleweight champion Chris Weidman at Polaris 23 in March 2023. Livesey emerged triumphant with a unanimous decision victory over the seasoned opponent. The official Polaris Instagram account wrote this. We're in the business of making the most entertaining matches possible, that you could never see anywhere else. When Owen Livesey took down UFC great Chris Weidman at Polaris 23, he had one request and he wanted to face Yoel Romero in Doncaster, and now they will face off in June. Yoel Romero, an Olympic silver medalist and one of the greatest middleweight MMA fighters of his generation will be coming to England to face Livesey in front of an army of his fans. Will the soldier of God get the win or is going to be another big night for Livesey at the Dome? UFC lightweight champion Islam Makachev has laid out his strategy for defeating Dustin Poirier in the main event of UFC 302. In just a few short weeks, Islam Makachev will defend his UFC lightweight championship against Dustin Poirier, notes the build-up to the highly anticipated bout. While Makachev is viewed as the clear favorite, this match presents Dustin Poirier with what could be his final opportunity to capture undisputed gold in the UFC. With this in mind, Poirier is expected to bring his utmost determination and grit to the octagon in pursuit of what could be the most significant victory of his career. However, Makachev exudes confidence, believing himself to be a cut above the rest of the lightweight division. In a recent interview with Yahoo Sports, he detailed his game plan for securing victory over Poirier. Makachev told this Yahoo Sports, We will start and I will try to take him down. He will try to get me in a guillotine choke. I will defend the guillotine. I will give him a couple punches. He will give his back. Then I will finish. Makachev also expressed his ambition to secure a second belt, stating, I have some job in this division. I don't want to give some chance to people from the other division. I already gave Volkanovsky two chances. Now I need my chance for a second belt. In my division, I think, honestly, I have Dustin and then Armin and then I'm done. We don't have some new opponent who deserves a title fight. Then I will be ready to fight the champion at 170 pounds. As the anticipation builds for the championship showdown, the outcome of the fight will determine who will leave Newark as the UFC lightweight champion. To simplify Derek Lewis' journey to the UFC as merely the typical narrative of overcoming poverty and adversity would be reductive and dismissive. While his background certainly played a role in shaping him, Lewis emphasizes a less common aspect of his story, the internal struggle of dealing with success amidst familial tensions. I think I made it, Lewis reflects, acknowledging the complexities of his personal journey. There is a lot of stuff going on in my personal life that people don't know about, but I am very comfortable with my life right now. I'm fortunate that my life turned out this way after all that I've been through. As he prepares for his 41st MMA fight, Lewis, known affectionately as the Black Beast, remains a cherished figure in the UFC, with a devoted fan base and a charismatic presence in the octagon. Yet, despite his popularity, he grapples with criticism and lack of support from his own family. The love from fans feels good, but the hate comes from my family, Lewis reveals, highlighting a painful contradiction in his life. People who don't know anything about me, and just see me on TV love me more, and show more support than my own family. That hurts me. I grew up wanting to take care of my family, 
and not having that support really hurts me the most, he shares. They say I've changed because of the money, but I'm the same guy. I'm just trying to be smart with my money because none of them are helping me fight to make it. In the face of familial estrangement, Lewis remains resilient, focusing on his career and the challenges ahead. Despite the pain, he carries on, embodying the spirit of perseverance that defines his remarkable journey. Charles Oliveira has thrown his hat in the ring to serve as the backup fighter for the Conor McGregor vs. Michael Chandler showdown. With McGregor set to return to action after a nearly three-year hiatus against Chandler in the UFC 303 headliner on June 29, Oliveira sees the role of backup as a strategic move that benefits him regardless of whether he steps into the octagon. I offered myself to be the alternate for that fight, and obviously, I'm down for that, Oliveira expressed during a UFC 301 media scrum. I'd make some money if I don't fight, and if I do fight, then awesome. However, Oliveira's willingness to step in as a backup comes with a condition, particularly if he were to face McGregor. The only condition is if I were to fight McGregor, then I'd have to renegotiate that contract before, he clarified. Once I said that, everyone started talking about me and moving to 170, but that's not exactly what it is. Oliveira, who holds a victory over Chandler from their previous encounter in May 2021, is keen on seizing any opportunity that arises. Despite a recent setback against Armin Zarukyan at UFC 300, Oliveira remains a formidable contender in the lightweight division, as showcased by his previous victory over Benil Dariush at UFC 289. Former UFC welterweight title contender Colby Covington has challenged Ian Machado Gary's claims amid speculation of a proposed fight. Gary initiated the callout to Covington after securing a victory against Jeff Neal at UFC 298, maintaining his undefeated streak in the promotion. Since then, Gary and Covington have engaged in a back-and-forth exchange on social media, with Covington taking aim at Gary's personal life, particularly his marriage to Layla. Last month, Gary asserted that he had signed a contract to face Covington at UFC 303, but Covington has not confirmed this offer. In a rare interview, Covington dismissed Gary's claims about the supposed fight offer, accusing him of fabricating the story for attention. We all know that he's a liar, Covington stated. The UFC, Dana White, Hunter Campbell, they haven't approached me about this fight. He's just lying, trying to generate clickbait. Covington emphasized his readiness to leave the decision regarding his next fight to the UFC matchmakers. He mentioned Bilal Muhammad as a potential opponent, suggesting that a victory over him could propel him back into title contention. Muhammad is anticipated to challenge UFC welterweight champion Leon Edwards, possibly at UFC 304. Covington suffered a defeat to Edwards at UFC 296 in December. Despite the ongoing verbal sparring, a matchup between Covington and Gary appears uncertain. However, Covington hinted that if the UFC presents him with the fight, he would accept it. Covington's career trajectory has seen him experience alternating wins and losses following a seven-fight winning streak that led to his first welterweight title opportunity. He faced two defeats against Kamaru Usman for the welterweight title and one against Edwards. Meanwhile, Gary, the former Cage Warriors welterweight champion, remains undefeated in his professional career, boasting victories over notable opponents such as Neil Magny and Daniel Rodriguez since his UFC debut. Although Covington vs. Gary has yet to materialize, the potential for this highly anticipated matchup to take place in 2024 remains a possibility, pending UFC matchmakers' decisions. Surging UFC heavyweight contender Robles Despagne has his sights set on championship glory in 2025. 
With an impressive record of 5-0 in MMA, Despanier is gearing up for a showdown against Acosta at the Enterprise Center in St. Louis, Missouri, on May 11. In his most recent outing, Despanier, also known as the Bad Boy, secured a victory over Josh Parisian by TKO at UFC 299, extending his winning streak to four fights, all of which were won in a combined time of just 37 seconds. In an interview with MMA Junkie, Despanier expressed his aspirations, stating, Look, if all goes according to plan, I think that by the beginning of next year 2025 I'll be fighting for the UFC heavyweight title, or at least the interim. With the current landscape of the UFC heavyweight division featuring John Jones recovering from injury, Stipe Miocic awaiting a potential bout with Jones, and interim champion Tom Aspinall in contention, Despanier sees an opportunity to make his mark. Despanier predicts that Jones will defeat Miocic upon his return to the octagon, leading to Aspinall's shot at the crown. While acknowledging the quality of both fighters, Despanier believes Aspinall has the momentum to emerge victorious. Dreaming of becoming a UFC champion, he emphasized his pride in such an accomplishment. As he anticipates the unfolding of events in the heavyweight division, he remains focused on his ultimate goal of capturing UFC gold.